Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 10 of my Hulkbuster build, which is behind me. Last time we got as far as making both hands and forearms with these opening hip pods so that weapons can pop out, which are now motorised. And in this episode, we're going to work our way up building the rest of the frame for the upper arm. Now, there's still some panels and things that need to be attached to this, but I'm not going to do that just yet because I have to work out how the elbow hinge works. So we've previously built this plywood frame, which I can climb into, unlock the joints and walk around in. And I built these cardboard mock-ups of all the pieces, and now I'm working through making the actual pieces. So the arm here is just a mock-up of the real arm. If we unclip that, it's just a big cardboard box. So what we need to do is work out how to attach the new forearm and hand um, to the upper arm with an elbow hinge and where the shoulder bell fits. Now we need several degrees of freedom here for motion, so obviously we need to be able to move the arm that way and backwards and forwards, and we also need to be able to twist it. Um, but in twisting it, we really need to keep that shoulder bell so that that doesn't twist, it just stays stationary, so the shoulder bell only gets two degrees of freedom and the rest of the arm gets the extra twist, um, keeping the shoulder bell stationary. So we need to make some quite complicated um, a hinge assembly, basically at the shoulder, and so far there's only a piece of wood up there um, with some clamps that was holding this cardboard one on. So let's have a look at some 3D CAD. So we've got some rather unexcited looking parts here in Autodesk 123 d Design, which I've designed all the parts in. This is free software you can download for absolutely nothing. So we've got a kind of right angle bracket there, which is going to support one end of a piece of studding um, <coughs> at the other end of the piece of wood from the previous clip. And we've also got two blocks there, so this is for one shoulder. And we've got basically some bearing blocks. So these are kind of T-shaped, so we can put a rod all the way through there and then make another axis rotate against it. And the second T-shaped piece is that second axis. Um, the two smaller holes at the end of that middle piece are to hold the shoulder bell on. And again, we've got um, a couple of places to put bearings. So it'll be easier if I print these out and show you in real life. So let's get those printing on my pair of Lulzbot printers. So here are my 3D printed parts. I've got these right angle brackets, which are pretty strong actually. They're printed 60% um, rectilinear infill and they're pretty rigid. We've also got some bearing blocks here. So I've got one which I've inserted the bearings in. They just push in there. And I've got plenty of these sort of cheap skate bearings with an eight mil center hole and it's about 22 and a half mil outside diam diameter. Um, that's just the right size for a piece of eight mil studding. So we're going to use that to make the actual hinged parts, so that should fit through there quite nicely. And then, obviously that will be bolted in. And then hinging against that part is the other T-shaped piece, which will take an 8mm bolt and two 6mm bolts. That will hinge against this, and then we have another bearing space there for the rotation uh, vertically of the arm. So the actual arm itself is going to be made of some wood, which is what this piece of wood is for. Just one stick for the upper arm, which will then hold the elbow hinge. I've also got some more of these metal brackets, which hold the studding at the other end of this bracket. So let's put that all together and see what it looks like. Alright, so I've installed those on both sides, obviously that allows the arm to move backwards and forwards and in and out, and this one rotates on the bearing, so that allows the arm rotation. The two holes here are for the shoulder bell, so that won't rotate, it will move in the other axes though, so the arm will rotate under the shoulder bell. So now I just need to put something on the end of this studding, which is going to come down to the elbow hinge. 
So let's have a look at the next part down. What we've got here are several parts. I've got a piece of plywood attached to another piece of wood which has been painted silver to match the rest of the frame. That's going to form the main stick for the arm. The other end is going to be attached onto the studding that I just showed you. I've got a metal bracket there which is one for building timber framed houses and so on which is going to be fitted on there somewhere. And that's going to form a hinge to the forearm. So I've got this 3D printed part with two bearings in which is going to screw onto the forearm this side and I'm going to have a piece of studding which goes through this bolted onto this bracket and allowing this piece to pivot so the whole forearm can pivot around the elbow joint um, and then this piece of wood is going to have this joystick mounted on so I need to make sure there's sufficient space to move that all around which is going to drive the elbow motor and it's going to drive the features in the hand so this is actually a pulley, it's got a groove in it and that's going to be driven by a motor somewhere in the arm, I haven't decided where yet. And I'm also going to have that um, kind of counterbalanced with some pistons on the front, which will be a bit like biceps, where in reality they're going to be springs that help um, hold the arm up, so that we haven't got all the leverage just on that joint. So let me put these pieces together and we'll try and hang the arms on the suit. upper arm sticks fixed on as you can see they move in all directions on that shoulder piece and they rotate and there's a bolt on there so we can attach the forearm um, at the moment I think these are set a bit a bit low so if I just pop this on here need to put a bolt on that uh, just pop that bearing back in but essentially that will fit there um, these arms are quite long, they always drag on the ground at the moment, so I think what I need to do is shorten this piece slightly, and I've got an adjustable piece here with bolts, but I think I still need to cut a piece off. And the reason is that as the arm stretches out, um, you won't be able to reach the joystick anymore in any case. So I think what I need to do is put on the top of the torso and actually measure with my own arms from the shoulder to see exactly where I need to place this and if this can go any higher. All right, so this is uh, feeling okay. Obviously, um, as I predicted, as I put my arms out, I can no longer reach right to the end of that where I was gonna mount the joystick. So what I actually need to do is mount it higher up. Probably what I need to be doing is bending my arms when I put them in this way, and then I can reach all the way out with my arms straight. So I actually need to be fitting the joystick at the top of these plates, um, which means that I can raise the whole arm up by about six to eight inches probably. Um, feels okay to have my arms bent in that position, obviously I haven't got the joysticks to grab onto at the moment. Um, I could probably do with these arm sticks going back a bit so I can get round the piece of wood to hold the joystick. But essentially I can do all of the motions that I need to, if you can imagine the mechatronic forearms on the end of that. And um, that's going to be really quite good. So I've taken quite a bit off there. Um, obviously I've got this bit of studding which means I can adjust it up and down um, but that's going to be slightly better proportioned. Right so that's obviously quite a lot better proportioned um, the arms are still massive but they're quite a bit further from the ground now um, if you can imagine there being quite a lot more mechanics of course on the upper arm which I still need to build including the motor that turns this. Let's just pop that torso back on me and see how my real arms are going to work with joysticks mounted there. Yep, I think that's going to be alright. Um, holding my arms slightly bent, quite hard to do at the moment, when I'm in the suit normally, and then stretching my arms out to their length to do all of the motions, so actually that length works out quite well. And I've moved the um, shoulder pieces back slightly so I can get my arms in front quite easily, which is now actually quite comfortable. Obviously I'll be holding sort of joysticks this way, which is going to be much more comfortable. And that's going to be the next step. 
So I just wanted to talk a bit about my elbow hinge and how I'm going to pull the whole weight of the arm on this pulley that I installed. So obviously there's going to be quite a lot of leverage to lift the entire forearm. But in fact what's going to happen is I'm going to build it rather similar to these Robo Sapien toys that were popular a few years ago. Um, where what they did in fact, as well as having motors, they had springs in the joints. So the um, arm is actually sprung to a centre position and then the motor, when it turns, just kind of biases it, so it just pulls it slightly in the opposite direction. And that means essentially the arm is self-supporting and the motor doesn't have too much load on it. It just pulls it one way or the other. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have um, some kind of bungee driven pistons or piston looking things at the front of the forearm on the suit where the bicep would be and then just have a motor which pulls it in one direction or the other so it's not taking the full weight around that pivot point. Right, so that's all I've got time for for this week, but check back for next week for more updates. I've got quite a lot more bicep cage to build, and I also need to build a piece that um, essentially holds the upper arm in a nice position so that uh, when it's relaxed the arm doesn't disappear behind there like that. So we're going to be doing the counterbalancing mechanism, which is going to be, as I mentioned, some pistons at the front. There's more cage to build, and then we're going to install a motor here, which is probably going to go behind this plate that drives that pulley. So you can follow me on social media for sneak peeks of future videos and updates on other projects. And also check out my crowdfunding campaign on patreon.com slash xrobots for some exclusive rewards including access to a live broadcast with me. Check out some other videos in my channel including my scrap metal inspired 3D printed HR Geiger alien xenomorph suits, my Iron Man build, and of course, more information on my Iron Man Hulkbuster cosplay.